This is a video about sorting. My name's Alan Doran. Before we start on this video, there are a few things that you should know first. What is an algorithm and what are the components of complex algorithms? These were covered in two earlier videos or you can consult your favourite book. You also need to understand the concept of a tree. We're not talking about biological trees, we're talking about the data structure trees. Again, there was a video covering this already online, or consult your favourite reference guide. So what is sorting? Well, we're using it here as a verb to arrange a set of things into a prescribed sequence. So the idea here in sorting is that we have some collection of objects that share some common features and we choose one of these features or sometimes more but quite often just one feature and we use that to generate an order for instance if we look here at the ferns we may say the bushiness of the fern is going to be the aspect that we're going to consider in generating an order and we're going to arrange things in sequence from the most bushy fern to the least bushy we could be sorting laundry, in which case we might want to do it by colour. So we may have all of the red things grouped together in a collection, and all of the blue things grouped together in a collection, and all of the black things grouped separately from those. Now, of course, we can choose these attributes um, differently depending on what we're trying to do. If we're talking about laundry, we may just want to wash all of our coloured things together and that means any colour can be grouped with any other colour, but we would keep, for instance, our whites separate. Even when we think about our everyday life, we find ourselves sorting. So if you think about your house, all of your kitchen implements are, no surprise, in different drawers in the kitchen. They're sorted so that you can easily find the cutlery and the pans and usually we don't just have a big pile with cutlery and pans and cups all mixed in together they're all separated if you think of your library you've probably got bookshelves with books lined up or your music library you might have CDs all lined up next to one another if you're really keen you may have organized your CDs in some kind of order such as alphabetic order by title so these are all different ways of sorting of course, sometimes we forget about this because sorting actually takes a little bit of time and we just make a big mess. Now, sorting is something that computers do a lot and the reason computers need to do this a lot is because they're often dealing with many, many different things. And as you'd know from experience, if you're dealing with many things and you want to find one of them, then the best way to, do, uh, to, to make it easy for yourself to find things is to have a sorted list or a sorted collection. It's hard to find your left sock when it's buried amongst the dirty washing. You'll recall from an earlier video perhaps the messy garage phenomenon. If you have a room that's not well ordered, one way we could find things was to subdivide it and subdivide it again and again in looking for things. But being neat and orderly is just a useful way of enabling us to find things. And to do that, we must sort. If you've seen the video on the Tower of Hanoi, you'll recognize uh, these illustrations. If I asked you in the image on the left to find me the longest gold disc, you'd have to look pretty hard, and even then, it would be difficult to find or to be sure that you'd found the longest one. Perhaps you can already think of an algorithm to do this. If, however, I gave you the pile on the right, which is the sorted collection of gold discs, you'd have a lot less trouble, I bet. The largest one is, of course, here at the bottom. OK, now suppose we've got this list of numbers. It deliberately continues off the right-hand side of the slide, and we're looking for the number 11. Well, we could have a search algorithm that begins at the left-hand side, and it checks each cell in turn to see if number 11 is present. 
So we look in the first cell. Is 11 here? No, it's a 7. Okay, we look in the next cell. It's number 50. No, that's not number 11 either. Okay, we go to the third cell. Is that number 11? Yes, it is. So we can stop. We've found number 11. We know it's in the list. Okay, let's instead of 11, look for 47. We look in the first one, 7. No. Next, 50. No. Next, 11. No, that's not it. 8. No, that's not it. 17. No, that's not it. And we keep going through the list. 3, 21, 45, 8, 88, 51, 93, and so on. We haven't found 47 yet, but we can't stop. We have to keep going through the list because we don't know if 47 is just up ahead and we just haven't met it yet. Okay, here are the same numbers, but in this case they're ordered in increasing numerical order from left to right. We want to know is 11 in here. All right, we'll start in the first cell. 3, then 7, then 8, then 8, then 11. We've found it. Okay, we had to search the first five or so cells and we found 11. We can finish searching. We know it's in this list. Now, as before, we're going to look for 47 in this list. We start at the left. 3, 7, 8, 8, 11. We still haven't found 47. 17, 21, 45, 50. Oh, now what's happened? We haven't found 47, but we've just found 50 in the list. Now, because we know that this list is ordered in increasing numerical order, once we reach a number that's greater than the one we're looking for, that is 50 is greater than 47, we know we can stop searching the list because there is no way that the number 47 can be anywhere to the right. So it doesn't matter how long this list is, once we get to 50, uh, if we didn't find 47 yet, we're not going to find it. So that's one good, like very useful feature of a sorted list. It saves us a lot of time. Now, lists aren't the only kinds of containers we can have. We'll, we'll talk just for a little bit here about something called a binary search tree. This is just like a list, a kind of a container for putting things into that enables us to search it easily. And it's easy to search a binary search tree because they're built in a sorted order, just like the list was in a sorted order, um, but they're constructed differently to a list. To add things to a binary search tree, we carry out a pr process called insertion. And this puts in new items at the correct location, at the, the sorted location, so that we can easily find them. It's a way of organising things. Here's a binary tree. Hopefully you've seen these before if you've done the video on trees. A binary tree has nodes, each of which has at most two children. Now here's what's called a binary search tree. Every time we uh, want to put in a number, we have to put it in a special order so that everything in the right subtree of a node n is numerically greater than or equal to n's value. So the nodes are like the cells in the list we saw before. The nodes hold numbers in this case of a binary search tree. Now here we can see that the top node has a 10 and we can say with authority because it's a binary search tree that everything to the right of the 10 will be greater than or equal to it. Everything to the left of the 10 will be less than it. So here's the right subtree highlighted of the 10. And you can see that the only node present in the search tree that is greater than or equal to 10 is 15. Now let's just have a look at a subtree of 10. Let's say the node 5 is the root of this subtree we're interested in. And we'll look at the right subtree of the node 5. And that's highlighted in the large triangle you can see now. So everything to the right of the 5 in this binary search tree must be greater than or equal to the 5. And in this case we can see 6, 7 and 8 are all to the right of the 5 and they're all greater than 5. But remember they're in the left subtree of the node 10. Therefore 6, 7 and 8 
are and must be less than 10 because they're in its left subtree. All right, now we'll look at this right subtree of the node 7, and the only location in the right subtree of 7 is a node holding the value 8, which is greater than 7. It will also be greater than 5 because it's in 5's right subtree, and it will be less than 10 because it's in 10's left subtree. I hope that makes sense. If not, maybe this will help. Here's the subtree again, uh, here's the tree again. Everything to the left, remember, of a node has a value less than its parent. So the left subtree of 10 contains <clears throat> 1, 3, 5, 7, 6, and 8. All of these numbers are less than 10. The left subtree of 5 contains 3 and 1. These two numbers are also less than 5. The left subtree of the node containing 7 just holds a single value 6. Now 6 must be greater than 5 because it's in 5's right subtree, remember? But it's less than 7, therefore it is in 7's left subtree. Okay, now how do we actually build one of these tree, trees? Over on the left you can see a row of numbers and we're going to add all of these to our binary search tree. Now we start with the node 10 or the value 10, and of course that makes the root. That's the first thing that we want to add to the tree. So it must make the root. Okay, so there's 10 making the root of our tree. Now the next thing we have to add is 15. Is 15 less than or greater than the node 10? Well, it's greater than what's in 10, so therefore it goes into the right subtree of 10. Okay, the next thing we need to add is 5. Is that less than or greater than 10? It's less than 10, so it goes in the location on the left subtree of 10. The next thing we want to add is 3. Now, here we start at the root again. We want to know is 3 less than or greater than 10? It's less than 10, so we travel down the left side, the left subtree of 10, and we find there's a node 5 there. Now is 3 less than or greater than 5? It's less than 5, so 3 goes on the left hand subtree of 5. Next we've got 7. We go back to the top again. Is 7 less than or greater than 10? It's less than it, so we go down to the left. Is 7 less than or greater than 5? It's greater than it, so 7 goes on the right hand side of 5. We go back to the top of the tree now and we're trying to insert 1. Is 1 less than 10 or greater than it? It's less than it, so we go down the left of 10 to 5. Is 1 less than or greater than 5? It's less than it, so we go down to the node 3. Is 1 less than or greater than 3? It's less than it, and there's nothing there, so this is where we attach 1. Next node, 8. Is this less than or greater than 10? It's less than it, so we go down the left. Is it less than or greater than 5? It's greater than 5, so we must go down the right subtree of 5, and we find there's a 7 there. So now we ask, is 8 greater than or less than 7? It's greater than 7, and there wasn't anything to the right of 7, so 8 is attached in the right subtree of 7. Lucky last, we need to insert into this tree the number 6. We start at the top of the tree, as before. Is 6 less than or greater than 10? It's less than it, so we go down the left subtree. Now, is 6 greater than or less than 5, we must ask. It's greater than 5, therefore we must go down the right subtree of 5, and we find there's a 7 there. Now we ask, is 6 greater than or less than 7? 6 is less than 7, so 6 must go into the left subtree of node containing 7, and since there's nothing there, we can attach 6. And that's it. We've now built our binary search tree from all of those numbers. Just remember, you always start at the top of the tree when you're going to do an insertion, and you compare to see if your number 
is less than or greater than or equal to the current node in the tree. If it's greater than or equal to the current node in the tree, you traverse the right subtree, otherwise you traverse the left subtree. And that's the whole algorithm for inserting a node into a binary search tree. Now, just as we search for a number in a list, we can search for a number in a binary search tree. So let's say we want to know if 8 is in this tree. Now, we start off at the top of the tree, 10. And we say, is 8 less than or greater than the node at the top? Now, when we're looking in this node, of course, it makes sense to check this node to see if the current value held is 8. It's not, it's 10, but 8 is less than 10. Therefore, we need to traverse the left subtree of the node 10 to look for 8 because we know it can't be anywhere in the right hand side of the tree. It's less than 10. Okay, so we go down the left subtree and we find the number 5. Now we want to know, well this one doesn't contain 8, as we said it contains 5, but 8 is greater than 5. Therefore here we need to traverse the right subtree of 5. That brings us down here. Now 8 isn't stored here either, there's the number 7. Is 8 less than or greater than 7? Well 8 is greater than 7, so if we're going to look anywhere, we have to look to the right, or in the right subtree of the node containing 7. And when we look here we find, look amazing, 8 is located here. So that's how you search a binary tree. It's just like inserting something into the binary tree, except in this case we don't have something we want to insert, we just want to check if the number is already in the tree or not. So that's just about it. Just remember, sorting involves picking some trait or aspect of a, an object in order to generate a sequence. That might be its numerical value, it might be the characters in its name, they could be used to sort things alphabetically, or it could even be the kind of object that something is. So as I said at the start, you could sort things as cutlery, crockery, uh, and I don't know, dishwashing equipment, and you could put those all in different places in your kitchen. But that's a way to sort things. Now in the case of computer science when, we th when we're thinking of sorting we're typically thinking of numerical values being organized in some way. But not always. Sorted collections are easier to search efficiently than unsorted ones as we've seen and one way of organizing things in a data structure for searching is to use a binary search tree and that's a sorted binary tree and we saw how to search for things in that. I suggest you write down a series of numbers that you make up and build a binary search tree using those numbers. Then try to find those numbers by following the algorithm I just described to search the binary search tree. Thanks for your time. I hope you understand why we sort things.